Hey folks and welcome along to this new updated video for Logo Package Express, an amazing piece of software that will help any logo designer to save time and money when it comes to exporting logos for your clients. Today I want to show you the new updated version which is a fully integrated extension for Adobe Illustrator. So let's just have a very quick look at the Logo Package Express website. This is where you're going to have to go to download and buy the software. There's lots of information on here, you've got FAQs, you've got reviews so you can see what other designers have thought after using the software. The pricing is $99 but this software is going to save you a lot of time, which equals a lot of money, and it will pay for itself very, very quickly if you create logos regularly for your clients. Now, once you have got your Logo Package Express software, you will receive a zip file. You need to unzip that, uncompress that, and inside the folder, you will find Mac installation, instructions and also Windows installation instructions. So please follow those to make sure that you install the extension properly. Okay, so now we can jump into Illustrator. So you can see here I have the panel open for Logo Package Express. If you need to find that, it's Window, Extensions, and you will find it in there. So what's the first thing that we need to do? Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to have a logo to export and I've chosen this rather simple one here. So what you do is you highlight your logo and you click on set logo. And you'll see here that it's created a master logo artwork file in CMYK. Okay, so before we go any further, I want to show you the settings area. First part is include Pantone conversion. So if you untick everything, it won't do any Pantone conversion at all. If you select either quoted and unquoted or one or the other, you can choose from automatic or manual. Automatic, the software will look at your CMYK colors and choose the closest Pantone color for you. That's great if you're happy to do that. I personally like to set my Pantone colors manually because I know exactly which ones I want because I have a set of Pantone guides and so I've chosen the colors. So I always choose manual. Generally, I don't really go with an uncoated at this stage. Um, I will just go with a coated. Then you have the inverting, inversion settings and you have a threshold for that. Generally, I leave that on 50. And then you have the different file formats for print and for web. Now, when you first install it, EPS is probably going to be unchecked. I like to send my clients EPS files, so I check that box. It does slow down the conversion time a little bit, but it's not hugely relevant. You know, it's still a couple of minutes, um, if that. And then you have scale, so you can set the uh, size of the web files so i can change that so i could change that to 450 if i wanted to and you can change the resolution of those digital um files so like the jpegs and the pngs you can adjust that here with this slider okay so that's all there is to the settings it's pretty straightforward so let's go back and now what i need to do is so it's set the logo i now need to set my logo mark which is this element here so i'm going to set the logo mark and you'll see now it's given me that there. You can view these on light or dark backgrounds by choosing these two buttons here. If you find that you've made a mistake in setting your logo mark, you can click the little trash icon, the little bin icon, it will delete it. And then you can just select the right part and set your logo mark. Now I don't have a logo type only version. It's it's combination mark here and I don't have a tagline, but if you did, you would select the word mark, hit um, select your logo type word mark, uh, hit that button and the same with the tagline. So now we've got that all selected, I'm going to hit make print logos and it's going to tell me that I've chosen to manually choose my Pantone colors. If you've chosen automatic, it will have done this for you. You won't have to go through this next stage, but I think it's good to show you anyway. So I'll hit continue. And then what I need to do is I need to go down to the Pantone version, which is this bit down here at the bottom. And I need to choose my Pantone colors. 
So you can see here, it's now got, it's got the um, CMYK colors in my swatches panel. So what I need to do is I have a file which has the Pantone colors which I need, which are these ones here. So I've got my Pantone solids. And what I want to do is I'm gonna just highlight one part of it and I'm just gonna drag across the Pantone and highlight it and that will add that Pantone into here. I can then select the other greens that need that and change them to Pantone. And I'll check this red here. And I'll choose it's Pantone 199. Now I'm gonna drag that into there. Need to ungroup this one, make that 199. And then I'm gonna have my leaf element, which is Pantone 342. I'm gonna drag that into here as well. Just check that's set as 342 and 342. And I'm just gonna group these again, Control G. And that's me set my Pantone color. So that was pretty quick. Then what you can do is you can click export print logos. But here's another step that I want to show you because it may be useful to some people. You may want to include some clear space around your logos. Different as a designer, you know how to set clear space when you're setting the logo into a document. But when you're sending these to the client, they may not know that and may not know how much clear space to set around the logos. So you can help them out by doing that for them. And the way to do that is if you hit Shift and O to choose the artboard tool, then hold down Shift and select all of the artboards for one specific um, type. So we're going for the full logo here. So select all the full logo artboards. Then we go up to the artboard options, click on that, make sure that the center point is fixed for the reference point. And then what you do is you just add in the amount of space that you want. So I want to add in 10 millimeters around each logo. So I can do that by going plus 10. Then I have to hit tab, don't hit enter because it'll just set 10 uh, to the width. Hit tab and then plus 10 to the height and then click OK. And you'll see it changes the size of the artboards. Then I want to do the same for the logo mark. I'm going to add five millimeters around each of those. So plus five, hit tab, and then do plus five, not four, plus five, and hit okay. And we see we've got that clear space now. Now, don't worry about this uh, black rectangles in here. Those get removed when the export happens. It's just to show you the white parts of the logo. Now, I don't actually want this version here, so I'm just going to select it all and I am going to delete it because I just didn't need that version. If you delete things from an artboard, it means it just will not export those files. So I've got everything that I need here and then I'm just going to click Export Print Logos. It's going to ask me for the name of the client and where I want to export them to. I've already set that up, so I'm going to create logo package. You'll see in the background that it's working its way through the artboards, creating the different files, and in here it's created a logo folder and a logo mark folder. So we'll just let that go through and do its stuff. Because I've got EPSs, it's taken a little bit longer, but if you hadn't chosen EPS, it would have been done by now. It's super duper quick. We've now got a little window here which says, congratulations, you're done with print logos. So let's have a quick look here in the logo folder. We've now got full color, grayscale, one color and reverse. If we go in full color and we can see we have a print folder. When inside the print folder, we have CMYK and Pantone quoted. If we open up CMYK, we have an AI, we have an EPS and we have a PDF. And for Pantone quoted, same. And it'd be the same for each of these folders as well. So we need to go back here and we are now going to go make web logos. And so it will go through and it will choose the different elements. Obviously you don't have Pantone in it this time because you don't have Pantone. I don't need this version, so I'm going to delete it. 
and then I am going to just simply choose export web logos. It'll ask me the destination again, same place, just create logo package and it'll work its way through again. You can see it working its way through each of these here. And once it's done, we'll get a little message saying that they're done as well. If we now go into the logo folder and go into full color, we now have a digital folder. And if we open that, we've now got an AI in there as well. We've got a JPEG, PNG, and an SVG file. Same for grayscale and all the way through. And it's exactly the same if we go into the logo mark, we have those files as well. So that's the updated version of LPE, the full extension for Illustrator. It's amazing. Saved me so much time and money. But more than that, I find that part of the logo design process mind numbing. And I'm so glad that I've got this software now to really speed up that process for me. If you're thinking about buying LPE for yourself, you'll find a link down in the description. It is an affiliate link. I will get a little bit of money if you buy it using my link, but hey, it helps me buy a pint down the pub. And that's a thank you from you for the time it's taken me to create this video. Give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. I release videos regularly on all sorts of topics from brand strategy right through to design and reviews like this. Click the little bell icon and you'll be notified when any of those new videos go up online. And that's all for this week. Until I see you next time, stay creative.